Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to see about Azure Databricks. I have created a separate playlist for Azure Databricks and I'll be using that playlist to upload all the videos related to Azure Databricks. So this is the first video in that playlist. Okay, so now let's get started. So firstly, what is Azure Databricks? It is an Apache Spark based analytics platform, which is mainly used for doing big data workloads. This tool is very popular and it is used by data engineers, data scientists, and also data analysts. So pretty much all the data professionals use this tool in Azure. So if you ask me why this tool is really popular, I would say there are a lot of interesting features within Azure Databricks. So let's see all these individual features within Databricks one by one with an example. So firstly, the most important feature is Apache Spark. So what is Apache Spark? It is an open source distributed processing system, which is mainly used for doing big data workloads. So this Apache Spark is inbuilt to Azure Databricks and it uses the Spark engine for all the data processing. So when we use Azure Databricks to process any data, the inbuilt Spark engine take care of all the partitioning and other optimization by itself, which makes it extremely powerful. And that's the reason Databricks is widely used for data transformation in Azure. So we can create high performance Spark compute in Azure Databricks for doing the data processing. There are wide varieties of Spark compute available in Databricks with the different CPU and memory size. It is very simple to configure based on the requirements and it is highly scalable. Say for example, if you create a cluster using a smaller compute, and in the later case, for some reason, you want to increase the cluster size. It is very easy to do it in a click of a button, which makes it extremely scalable. So one thing to note here is the cost for this cluster is charged only when we are actually using it. So we can turn off this cluster if we are not using it and we are not going to pay for it, which is really cool, right? The next big feature in Azure Databricks is notebooks. In Databricks, all the development work like data processing or model training is done using the notebooks. A notebook is a kind of code editor, which is in the format of different cell based structure. You could type in the code to see the immediate results inside the notebook itself, which is very easy and convenient to work with. Since it is a cell based editor, you can use each cell to perform different functionalities, which is very easy to understand and maintain as well. Having the notebook option inbuilt is another great feature of Azure Databricks. The next feature is it is very easy to switch programming languages in Databricks. Databricks support different programming languages like PySpark, Spark SQL, Scala, and R. So when you create a notebook in Databricks, the default programming language you can type in the notebook is Python. You can easily switch to other programming languages in the same notebook. Say for example, if you are very good at SQL, then you can use a feature called magic command in Databricks. If you could type percentage SQL in the cell, the cell automatically converts to a SQL cell where you could type SQL code to perform the data processing. Similarly, you could use the magic command to convert the cell to different language cell such as PySpark, Spark SQL, Scala, and R. This is extremely useful since you could use multiple languages in the same notebook for processing the data. These are some of the features of Apache Spark in Azure Databricks. The next important feature in Azure Databricks is ETL. We all know ETL stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. Although Azure Databricks is mainly used for the transformation part in the ETL framework, we could use Azure Databricks as an individual tool to perform the complete ETL process. Let's see how we could do that. Firstly, we could use Spark Connector for doing the extraction part. With Spark Connector, we could use Databricks notebook to connect to multiple sources and ingest the data from source to destination. The Spark connector is supported in many data sources. For example, SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, MongoDB, and several other data sources. For ingesting the data from these data sources, we don't want tools like Azure Data Factory or Azure Synapse Analytics for performing the ingestion. Instead, we could also use Spark connector to connect to these data sources to extract the data using Azure Databricks itself. And the next one is the transformation part. We all know that Databricks is the most preferred tool in Azure for doing the data transformation due to its inbuilt Apache Spark option. And the final one is the loading part. 
We could also use Azure Databricks for loading the data into the database using the Hive Metastore feature. With Hive Metastore, we can create databases and tables where we can load the transformed data to it. The tables can also be queried using the new SQL editor feature inside the Databricks or can also be consumed by different reporting tools like Power BI or Tableau. So due to all of these different features, we can use Azure Databricks to do the complete ETL process. Also more than actually performing the ETL process, we can also use Azure Databricks to orchestrate the ETL. So what I mean by this is, in Azure Databricks, we have an option called Workflows. Using Workflows, we can run the notebook that we create using Azure Databricks as a job, which means that we can schedule the notebooks to run it on a regular basis. Due to this feature, using Azure Databricks, we can orchestrate the complete ETL process by configuring when and what notebook to run with the different triggers and stuff. This makes Azure Databricks as a complete ETL tool and hence its most popular tool among the data engineers. The other major feature in Azure Databricks is data science and machine learning. We can use Databricks to train a machine learning model. Also, we can serve or deploy the model that has been trained. Databricks is well suited for doing data science and machine learning stuff as it has inbuilt features such as option to train AutoML experiment and also we have dedicated Spark clusters available for doing the machine learning stuff with higher GPUs suitable for model training. We all know that for training a machine learning model with huge data sets requires higher GPU and we could configure it easily in Databricks. Also there is a dedicated tab called serving to deploy the train model. So once the model is deployed, we can make use of the model endpoint for doing any kind of predictions. So due to these features, similar to how Databricks is very popular among the data engineers, it is also popular among data scientists and thereby it is widely used to tool for doing machine learning and data science work in Azure. The next important feature is streaming. We can say that Azure Databricks is a perfect tool to work with streaming data. There are different features in Databricks that allows us to work seamlessly with streaming data. For example, we have structured streaming, which is an Apache Spark based streaming solution. Because of this, we can perform near real time data ingestion and also can perform near real time machine learning and predictions. Due to the streaming capabilities, we could ingest the data faster from source to destination in the streaming fashion instead of doing in a batch load on a scheduled basis. In the future videos, we can explore these streaming functions and how we could work with that. The next feature is the SQL editor. We have seen how data engineers and data scientists can work with Databricks. And this time, this is all about the data analyst. In Azure Databricks, we have an option called SQL editor which is kind of similar to SQL Server Management Studio. You could use the SQL editor to query the tables that we have in the database and analysis can be done on the data. In most cases, a data analyst work with the cleaner data that would be querying it to find insights from it. They can make use of this editor to write SQL commands to query the data. We need to use Databricks SQL query language to query the data in Databricks, which is kind of similar to Spark SQL. So due to these features, a data analyst can also work with Azure Databricks. After this, we have an interesting feature, which is easy collaboration. Azure Databricks can be used by multiple people at the same time and can work collaboratively for performing any kinds of task. This is possible due to its Git integration functionality. The popular Git repos such as GitHub and Azure DevOps is supported in Azure Databricks. We have a separate tab called repos in Azure Databricks workspace where we could use that to integrate with different repos such as GitHub and Azure DevOps. This feature leads to easy collaboration and working collaboratively in doing any kinds of data engineering or data science work is important and we can do that very well using Azure Databricks. So these are some of the main features of Azure Databricks. I think by this time, you should be more excited to work with Databricks if you haven't worked with it before. Trust me, this is a great tool to work with for any data engineers or data scientists or data analyst. I guess now you have a clear understanding about what exactly Databricks is and its important features. I'll be adding a lot of videos later to Databricks in this playlist. 
So please subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more about it. Also give a like to this video if you find this video useful. That's it for today. See you in another great video. Until then, cheers. Bye.